start the transmission. Welcome everybody. Uh, today we have a new pre-event uh, whose name is uh, Transformation, the Future of Housing, that will uh, be um, uh, the, the presented by Anna Tostoins, that you, uh, many of yours know very well who Anna is. And I let you with Anna that will introduce this the pre-event and the, the guests. Welcome, Anna. Thank you so much, Claudio. Um, I'm very happy to be here in Chile, in France, in Portugal, and I believe in, uh, I must see how many participants we have, but I would say that South America in uh, idea. And today the topic has to do with housing and the transformation of housing till nowadays. Um, so uh, this kind of large uh, debate um, focuses on the challenges and strategies that have been encountered uh, to preserve collective housing uh, as one of the major issues in the contemporary sustainable agenda. Uh, and we really do believe um, that um, during the modern movement uh, experiences, there are um, really impressive solutions that should be kept. Uh, and for this discussion, we have with us Richard Klein. Richard Klein came from France, from Lille. He's professor, he's architect, uh, historian of architecture, and professor at École Nationale Supérieure d'Architecture et de Paysage de Lille. So I would like to emphasize that it is one of the not so many superior schools of architecture in France. Uh, and he is linked with architecture and landscape. And this is really very, very, very interesting. Um, Richard Klein is a member of the uh, laboratoire of the, um, can you please help me, Richard, the L-A-C-T-H. It's the laboratoire of 20th century. Yes, but it's a laboratory of my University of Lille. But... Where he's a member. She's, he is the chair of Docomo of France, and his research focuses on the history of the 20th century architecture and its representations. He's the author of numerous books and books and, and catalogues, namely on Mali Stevens, perhaps a kind of uh, avant-garde from Ma Mali Stevens and some of the works of Mali Stevens are now uh, to be uh, appreciated by all of us because of Richard Klein and all his team. So some of these buildings were uh, written. Um, of course, he has been working as well on Le Corbusier and Roland Simonet. And he's dealing with the history of modern movement. And, and today, I believe, he's going to present uh, to us uh, a kind of an accomplished book from a long research on housing uh, in Lille, which is very, very interesting. The other um, conference is going to be um, the, 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 the keynote is going to be Zara Freire. Zara Freire, she's an architect. She's a master in, in architecture and, uh, with the thesis um, on uh, the modern and the climate uh, in the Lusophone Africa. Uh, she worked on the school buildings and all the devices to connect uh, climate and culture, I would say, in Mozambique. Uh, and she has been for a long time, 10 years, the General Secretary of Docomom International and co-editor of the Docomomo Journal between 2014 and 18. She's currently, I would say, finishing her PhD on the transformation of domestic space in the post-World War uh, large housing states in Lisbon. 
Uh, so I believe we are in the best uh, company to discuss this topic of housing and how transformation can be accepted and in a certain way can even improve uh, what was thought. So I would like to give the word to Richard Klein. I hope you are able to share your screen. I will try to do so. Do you see my screen? Mm -mm. Yes? No. No, it must yes. be. Now, now we see. And we wish to have it in full. Yes. yes, yes. Perfect. It's going on. It's OK Perfect. now? Perfect. I will shut up now. Yes. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Excuse me. We are seeing the, the other um, presentation, the um, moderator presentation, not the, the complete screen. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, No, Again, it's, the same. The same. it's still the same. Now it's okay. It's okay. Perfect. I'm sorry. Thank you very much for your help. <laughs> um, well, um, well, the the research. I will talk about is uh, the results of the work of two persons, myself, uh, of course, and uh, a good colleague of mine named Caroline Bauer. And we just finished uh, to publish the book about, uh, this is quite a short period in France, um, during 1968 and 1978, so it's not a very old period, but quite forget by most of the people. And uh, during this period, in fact, uh, the French government tried to make a new policy about construction of social, of collective social housing to make the difference between the period before, uh, characterized by the grands ensemble uh, and mass construction. And to do that, in fact, uh, there is a, a small organization who try to make new experimentation about uh, industrialization and prefabrication about uh, social housing with the aim to change radically the morphology uh, and the aspect of the social housing. And um, during this period, in fact, uh, perhaps the most pragmatic uh, solution Imagine to do that is named model innovation in France. And it's a kind of a, a special experimentation to tie industry and architecture uh, to propose a um, model of, uh, of uh, buildings, of new buildings, um, with the objective to change radically uh, the precedent period. In fact, it, it was interesting for us to work uh, of such period because um, um, these buildings uh, built in France are now completely forget. Um, and in fact, they, they are treated as the buildings of the period before and of the Grand Ensemble, for instance. I will show you some examples. To show you some um, example of this model innovation, um, we can say that some of them are very pragmatic, use um, in a very radical way the prefabrication. Uh, for instance, uh, there is one system called Sika Sigma made about uh, this kind of uh, dream of the industrial production of, uh, of social housing. You could see there 
um, in fact, a factory of pieces, of prefabricated pieces assembled to make uh, the buildings. And um, uh, we have some example of uh, this kind of building built in the north of France, mostly in the north of France, built with a consideration that um, now in the landscape and the usual landscape, this kind of building have some qualities, in fact, in uh, integration, for instance, to the landscape as uh, it is now with uh, some quality of uh, finishing and uh, even if it's simple architecture, we uh, try to find some good example of this kind of uh, building. Another model innovation named Mai is a, a conception by a very well-known engineer uh, named Jean Barretz, specialized in the prefabrication, he used to work with uh, Marcel Breuer, for instance. And, and for instance, as it was a very radical system, we find some operation with good qualities about space and architecture and uh, finishing of the, of the details. For instance, the panel, uh, the prefabricated pan panel of uh, this kind uh, are very, very sophisticated and very well. Uh, it's a very good fabrication. And some of details show how uh, the details of these panels could have a, a great uh, have a great interest in terms of uh, of details of architecture. Some systems are more sophisticated. That this one, for instance, we, uh, this is called the Tabouret Maillard. Maillard is the name of the architect who, who is a conceptor of this system, based on uh, prefabrication very special of one piece, comported in fact uh, four pillows and the floor, uh, which made uh, architecture very, in fact, uh, uh, made with uh, addition of this system to make the structure of all the buildings. And uh, some buildings are very, very, uh, in fact, uh, interesting because it's a kind of a rationalist tradition in France made on structure and a feeling of the structure with panel. Here, this is quite light panels, but it could be uh, under the types of panels. And you show the results of one quite well conserved in, uh, in the north of France. Um, another model is uh, one quite well known by uh, Andrew, Michel Andro and Pierre Parra, based on a different principle to, to, to get the buildings a very, very interesting terrace of 25 square meter uh, dimension. And uh, you see the gradation of the, of the profile of this building. It's one of the most popular uh, model innovation in France. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the photography show the way the, the, the terrace can be used. And uh, it was quite uh, a new, of course, a way to imagine a social building with an exterior uh, place so so important for 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 the people. So this is some example of the this model name uh, Maison Gradin Jardin. Uh, well, this is a, a way to consider social collective housing. Uh, as a, a mix between individual uh, housing and collective housing, which was, uh, in, of course, uh, very interesting uh, for the inhabitants. This is some example of now um, the realization and the pictures which are on books. Uh, and uh, a special type of this kind uh, get a uh, morphology of a pyramid is very, very appreciated by the inhabitants. Um, some of them are directly connected to the tradition of modern uh, architecture, modern movement. For instance, here's a model innovation named Salamandre, is, con is a conception by uh, André Wojanski, uh, which is, of course, quite well known as a, one of the last collaborators of Le Corbusier. And we could find some um, 
reference of uh, Le Corbusier uh, harmonic, for instance, uh, composition in such a building, which is uh, characterized by a loggia, in fact, and uh, as you can see in a black and white picture just uh, up uh, in the left part of the, of the page. Uh, this is a logotype of the Salamandre, um, and uh, the inside uh, of the building, uh, um, a test building uh, for uh, uh, this model innovation and the reality when it has been a little bit changed, for instance, for the polychromy, just in the north of France uh, too. And um, well, I would like to insist on, the, on this one, which is very, very interesting because uh, it's a conception of Louis Schneider, who imagined, in fact, uh, um, that the vertical structure of the building could also uh, contain the circulation of the fluids of the building. So, uh, well, it's diffi difficult to translate in France. The name is Poto Gain. In fact, it's Pillar and a Girdle, um, where inside you have on this picture. Uh, the the water, of course, the heating, the central heating, uh, the electricity, and all the the fruits of the uh, of the building who are inside the structure. For this architect, that means a great flexibility of the inside of the the, the flats, and he, he showed drawings where, of course, uh, all the the part of the flats where you need to be connected with the fluid water, for instance, um, it can be as it as it is inside the vertical structure. It can be everywhere in the surface of the of the flats. So uh, the drawing is sometimes uh, very optimistic uh, in comparison of the reality, but the idea was very interesting. And of course, the, the morphology of this kind of building is uh, in, in the same um, movement than uh, a kind of uh, uh, expression of the vertical structure and filling with very light panels. Uh, and here you see uh, how it use a polychromy, uh, for instance. And well, I would like to insist so, uh, for the fact that uh, all these buildings as are uh, very oftenly customized by uh, external uh, insulation. I take this example. This is the same building uh, at the origin, and now it is like that because uh, uh, even the the architect who designed uh, the refurbishing of the of the buildings forget how uh, was the functional system and the structural system, so they don't uh, take care of, uh, of the uh, architectural expression of the uh, building. Of course, um, this kind of model innovation were very very influenced by uh, some of. Uh, um, well, well, international architecture, and um, uh, they get the morphology of uh, proliferation of uh, of flats uh, to be very different um, than the grand ensemble and the uh, academic composition of the grand ensemble. We try to find uh, because we are talking of a transformation and a way to save uh, this kind of uh, architecture. We try to, to use a new labelization in France named Architecture Contemporaine Remarquable, Remarkable Contemporary Architecture, which is a new label. Uh, this is not a protection. This is only a label and a labelization of building just to point out the fact that it could be interesting as, as an architecture uh, uh, of nowadays. Uh, we, it is a new label because the labelization before was uh, uh, 20th century heritage. Um, and in fact, this, this is not a, a protection. This is not a, 
um, uh, official protection of heritage. This is only a way to, to, to point the fact that uh, it could be interesting. This is very difficult in France to point this kind of buildings, which, which are completely mistreated. Uh, in a reality of uh, of uh, the day uh, life, uh, even the um, society uh, who take care, who supposed to take care of this building, don't don't like them. They dislike this kind of architecture, and what is very paradoxical, they, there is a kind of assimilation of this kind of building uh, as if it was the same buildings at the period before. So for many people, this is exactly the same than the Grands Ensemble. And it has been imagined exactly to, not to be the same of the Grands Ensemble. And we, we have a criteria of this labelization. And uh, of course, we, we have made an argumentation for uh, to insist on the importance of um, this uh, public policy, for instance, uh, which is which is was uh, fifty years ago and completely forget. Um, for instance, we insist on the technical innovation uh, uh, inside this kind of building, even of the notoriety of uh, some architects. So, for the six uh, uh, criteria of this. Uh, Labelization, we find uh, arguments, and we we succeed in uh, in uh, after an inventory we made in the north of France, where we find uh, eighty five operations uh, of collective housing uh, relevant of the uh, model innovation uh, system. Uh, we try to have a labelization for 25, for instance, this is uh, the, the name of the model innovation uh, concern uh, by the north of France. And we try to, we succeed in, uh, in, uh, in get labelized 21 uh, operations of uh, this kind of building, which is a kind of a success in fact. And uh, we will see now uh, what uh, will, be done um, with this building and uh, how they will be a little bit more respected, in fact, in uh, their uh, architectural uh, quality. Tied to the book I was talking to you, there is an exhibition, of course, this is another tool uh, to get new consideration this kind of building. And uh, we hope with uh, that, that um, perhaps uh, it can be uh, extended to the architecture of uh, this kind, I mean serial architecture, which is, for our point of view, one of the production very, very interesting of the second part of the 20th century. And with uh, model innovation, in fact, and beside uh, the question uh, specifically of the model innovation, there is uh, the question of uh, what will be done with the serial architecture and the serial collective housing built uh, everywhere, in fact, during this period, during the 60s and the 70s, and uh, what happens with the qualities of this uh, kind of building with uh, new contemporary uh, problems posed by, uh, for instance, a problem of energy. Well, this is uh, some panels of the exhibition. Well, I try to be uh, just in the time that I have, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, dear Richard Klein. What a pleasure to see that uh, your research has coming to more uh, outputs, as we say in English. So these books are really great, as well as the exhibition. And we all know that these little steps are so important for the people to recognize what for us architects is obvious. So in a way to, to put 
people together, even the inhabitants, to give value to something that it's quite normal for them and sometimes not so much valuable. If you agree, we didn't talk, but I, I would suggest that we have the second presentation and then we open to, uh, let's say, a kind of uh, uh, answers and questions. But if there's anyone in the assistant that have something very, very specific concerning the presentation of Pro Professor Richard Klein, I mean, this model innovation or innovation, uh, les maisons à gradins, so these houses uh, with the, the, the little um, steps and, and gardens or the prefabrication system, please let me know that we can open immediately for some very specific questions. Or you may raise the hand or I think till the moment don't think so there's no specific questions so i will give the i will give the the word to to zara freira you already know her um, and now it's a, let's say a portuguese action and vision of this um, issue zara can you please I, yes i will try thank Welcome. you i'm going Okay, I'll try to share the PowerPoint. Um, this. Just a second. Are you all um, seeing PowerPoint? Yes, it's okay. <laughs> okay, and thank it's, you. It's okay. Thank you. So, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, the work I'm going to present is part of my PhD research that is being um, conducted at CITUA in Technical <coughs> under the supervision of Professor Ernst Stein. Uh, and it is dedicated to the architecture of domestic space of three neighborhoods in Lisbon that were pragmatic of the addressing the housing question for the greatest number, um, which has included the concern to adopt the domestic space to the ways of living needs and aspirations of different social classes. I am not only documenting original projects, but also the transformations that residents have been making to adapt their homes to the comfort needs that have been changing after 50 years of use. But today I will focus my presentation in only the first neighborhood constructed, which is Olivage North. <clears throat> So through the 40s, the shortage of housing in Lisbon increased a lot, leading to the appearance of illeg illegal uh, dwellings and shanty towns in many areas of Lisbon. To solve the situation, the Municipal Council of Lisbon created the Urban Studies Office in uh, uh, 54 and Housing Technical Office in the 60s to build new housing with affordable rents for low-income households co-founded by the state. Olivage North, uh, you see my mouse because I would like to. No, yeah. I can't no? see your mouse. Oh, okay, it's a pity. Can you try once again? Mm, I don't know how to make it, but well, I will say with words. <laughs> um, so three neighborhoods were constructed, Olivage North, Olivage Shoe, and later Shellas in the South uh, within this decrow law, which was a very important uh, legal measure that de have determined that a housing shortage should be resolved by providing a ratio of 70% of social housing distributed within four different socioeconomic categories. <clears throat> Category one was for the poorest families and should account for 40% of the units, while category four was for the healthiest families and should account for only 10% of the units. Then we have 30% for category 2 and 20% for category 3. Although Portugal was still under a dictatorial regime that survived the end of the Second World War, the so-called Estado Novo, new state, that was in force between 33 and 74, the 60s were marked by an overarching idea that Lisbon had to be a modern city in line with 
with what was most innovative in the rest of Europe. So rethinking the traditional city, the idea of an integrated plan became prevalent, extending the concept of housing to a full and balanced quality of life. Housing implied not only the dwellings, but everything else involved with human life in urban context. <clears throat> so uh, the ethical dimension of the modern movement was accepted finally on a large scale in the Portuguese capital, and the development of habitat for the greatest number could finally be, be undertaken by socially aware architects. Inspired by visits to the welfare state developments in other European cities, the Portuguese architects appealed for their involvement in seeking solutions for the housing question. In this framework, Olivais North, with 1,889 houses for 80,000 inhabitants, was conceived on a smaller scale trial for the major operation that would follow in the south, which is the Olivais Shoe, that has provided uh, almost 8,000 dwellings for 38,000 inhabitants. The fact that they succeed one another chronologically enables, enables a very interesting critical reading of the involving interpretation of the modern movement in Lisbon, although today I will dedicate this presentation exclusively to Olivais North. Il Olivais North inaugurated the adoption of the Athens Charter in Lisbon. So the urban structure was based on a rational occupation of the site, marked by, by the isolated insertion of residential buildings, subject to the criteria of solar, solar exposure and ventilation in an open landscaped space. Conceived as a neighborhood unit, the facility supporting housing of a social nature, like the commerce, culture, and recreation, constitutes a nucleus in a civic commercial center. You see the two is the school and the three is a shopping civic center. The four are two churches, um, the six, is a petrol station and a five uh, church. The circulation spaces formed a hierarchical system with differentiation between the traffic and the pedestrian circulation networks. And this is a very important, uh, not so much detail, which is the building lots were located through direct sales to the entities with a clear social interest, most capable of promoting the construction of residential buildings institutions for social security. The gray slots are under specific program and are single family houses that I'm not studying, but because I'm only dedicated my study to collective housing. Then you have housing for state employees of different ministries, like the Ministry of Education for housing teachers, for instance. You have social service of the armed forces. Then you have the Cardinal Sergeida Foundation, who was a priest very committed back then to reduce the number of homeless people in the city. Some lots are would be intended for public auction and others would be reserved for the municipality of Lisbon for addressing, uh, addressing urgent cases of resettlement. This means that while army, uh, well, I would like to, to point, but uh, this means you have buildings close to each other in one you you could find uh, uh, um, people uh, from the army whether in in the other side you have people that was living in barracks side by side uh, then uh, sorry this system contributed for the social mixing that was intended for this neighborhood with the goal of avoiding the creation of social ghettos, as happened in many other places back then. For this purpose, the neighborhood was defined with typical, repeatable buildings in various locations. Each of them was intended for different socioeconomic categories and designed by different teams of architects. So you have this, the number one, the most uh, cheap buildings, number four, number two, number three, and then a single building for number four, which is the healthiest building. And like the case of Olivais Schul, which was developed with a more organic planning, the distribution and design of the buildings in Olivais North have a direct correspondence with their corresponding socio socioeconomic categories. This means that the higher classes were given tall buildings with eight and 12 floors, and the lower classes lower buildings with four 
floors uh, on average. But it also means that those tallest and richest were arranged next to the civic commercial center and the school in the highest and most central area of the urban cell, oriented along Cartesian axis and resembling a kind of acropolis. I am showing you here the buildings intended for category four, which is the that single one, and the category three that are for similar buildings. The lower buildings with greater repetition of type and more varied orientation were dispersed around the periphery in order to follow the terrain following a planned mass logic. As a belated application of the principles of that and charter, the plan reflected also post-war tendencies, notably the British Newtown construction program. And here I'm showing the projects for category two, uh, small scale tow towers and linear blocks. Here also category two from another team, also linear blocks. These one are duplexes. And finally, category number one from two different teams of architects. The buildings intended for the higher social categories had a more imposing volumetric presence and embodied rationalist devices in a more pronounced way, being paradigmatic of the typical modern housing block that can be seen in the plastic exaltation of vertical communications, in the wall-to-wall -wall balconies, large windows, in the use of pilotes on a broad platform articulating accesses, the express modulation of the structure in the facades and in the shared terrace roof in the upper level. They replace the relationship with the immediate exterior with the intention of transporting social relationships to the heights through assets galleries that recall the celebrated streets in the air. Inside, the organization of these buildings, despite being of a social nature, was still arranged according to two different distinct roles. We have the residence entrances and the service entrances. On one side, there is the main elevator that leads to a very small and ironically windowless hall, while on the opposite side, there is a service elevator next to the staircase in a spacious and well-lit -lit hall. This dichotomy, with a clear distinction between family and servant areas, even in terms of color, extends to the interior of the housing. On one side, there is the main entrance in front of a vast corridor providing access to the living rooms and the bedrooms, in a logic of Babylon of spaces inherited from the past. And on the, on the other side, there is the kitchen with dependent access, a laundry area, a maid's room, and a bedroom, and the family bedrooms. An interesting feature of these houses is the sliding door connection between the living room and the dining room that you can see on the left side. Um, and it's quite amusing to see how these houses were decorated and occupied with aesthetics values that held their families of the Stade Nouveau regime and it had in the cities. Houses with generous areas, well ventilated and very luminous, were completely darkened soaked in wallpaper and carpets, boasting uh, Louis XIV uh, chairs and Chesterfield sofas. It's almost caricatural and illustrates as well the disconnection that can exist between the intentions of the architects and the reality of the occupants. In terms of changes made to these houses, aside from the bedroom renovations and the closure of balconies, balconies which is a common phenomenon across all social classes in Portugal, there haven't been significant alterations. The houses are, have very large areas, in fact, which allowed for easy adaptation to the introduction of new appliances, for instance, on the landry space, in these cases, of course. Most of these houses are still occupied by the original residents that you can see on the upper picture. Usually the matriarch of the fam old family, often over uh, 20 years old, living alone in a huge house supported by maid and nurse. The issue of property is crucial in these neighborhoods, not only to understand who occupies these houses, but also to comprehend matters related to property <clears throat> changes and maintenance. This is just one building, but it consists of two plots. Most of these buildings were at some point converted into horizontal property, and the original residents were able to buy the apartments at a reasonable price, but some remain still today in the original ownership. So, in the left, you have the, a building from the social service of the armed forces till today. On the right, you have the horizontal, horizontal property ownership. So on one hand, we have the fortunate, fortunate realization 
that there isn't a single enclosed balcony because the residents never had permission for that. But on the other hand, it's entirely vacant, which is it, which it's a shame, of course. On the other side, we confirm that each resident did as they pleased with their apartment. Moving to category number three, buildings, the logic remains the same. We have separate entrances, uh, main and service. And I put together this montage to show you the irony of the two types of houses that literally exist on the same floor. On one side, on the original resident who closed off the hallway and corridor even more, and the second resident from a younger generation who renovated the apartment to have it closer to the original. Here in the living room, they only change the windows for better energy perform efficient performance. Yes. And of course, they modernize the kitchen, which is the most common uh, procedure. The human concerning the lowest socioeconomic categories. The human approach sought to reinvent traditional images with the aim of fostering neighborhood relationships through the creation of outdoor living spaces that could function as an extension of the home. Places for meeting and appropriation with the aim of satisfying a need for participative civic involvement in the social life after work. So we have gathering places on the ground floor in the exterior, which, which we didn't find in the healthiest family buildings. It was believed that the low income residents due to their traditional cultural habits or sedentary lifestyles imposed by their own economic condition and the exiguity of housing spaces would appreciate these meeting places. These concerns were also developed in the common spaces of the buildings, not only in the exterior. In the case of this tower, which was the first socially oriented building to win a Volmer Prize, which is a Portuguese important prize, we can find Portuguese pavement on the floor, giving the feeling of being outdoors, open balconies facing the garden that people occupy with their own plants, fixed benches to rest, and it is a place where, where children can play safely. The principle of combining art and architecture also brightens up the daily lives of the residents, providing social housing with de dignity. Inside the flats, in the buildings for the lower categories, there are considerably smaller areas contrasted with their varied internal layouts, layouts with solutions that enable flexibility and directly connect the living room and the kitchen, kitchen through these amazing cabinets that can be open or fully closed. Also, following the social studies conducted back then, inspired by the work of Chambord de Law in France, it was believed that low-income families preferred to have a large kitchen where they could heat and gather together. These kitchens had a small window, as, it, uh, as you can see in the, the top picture, uh, where they could, uh, because back then there was delivered of milk, bread, newspaper, etc., uh, were made door to door. And today it's also, again, very useful with Uber deliveries. With plans intended to promote great spatial fluidity and family communication, the balcony was often seen as a living space or as a link between different spaces, promoting this circulation, circular circulation within the flat and different uh, options of occupation, which was, was very interesting to be, can be adapted. These apartments are very well done and in excellent, excellent condition. The alterations made are few, with the most common being the opening of one of the bedrooms into the living room to serve as an office connected to the living area. A similar approach is done in these less expressive buildings that also has an outdoor area with fixed bench to relax and take shelter from the rain. An alteration made in almost all buildings in the neighborhoods is that they didn't have street doors and almost all of them were closed for a greater sense of uh, security around the Hades. With this type of doors you can see in the, in the below picture, uh, not very adapted to the original building. With a very rational layout in this case, the kitchen was also separated from the living room by a cabinet, but its small size makes people open it to the living room nowadays. Those who bought this house in particular, a young couple, um, they didn't, uh, they bought it with this, that our altered kitchen already. They wouldn't have made it this way, but the changes they made afterwards are in the direction of restored original design. They even found an original door for the bedroom, 
that the former resident had saved following the same logic of exchanges that exist in the Barbican, for, for instance. Uh, in the, the window in the living room had also been changed to an aluminium one, and the residents want to make it like the original, but as they are no longer manufactured, it could cost like 3,000 euros and they cannot afford it. In most cases I've studied, the, they are apartments altered by the residents without architectural plans, but sometimes we also find some cases of qualified renovation projects. This is the same apartment I showed before in the exact same building, and it's a very successful and beautiful, beautiful renovation. This is the case of two duplexes stacked one on top of another, arranged longitudinally in a gallery. What happened here is that on the lower floor, most people closed off the small public entrance hall, turning, turning into uh, an interior space and closed most of the balconies. The result is a wonderful array of different aesthetic references, turning the building into a true palimpsest. The original was like uh, uh, in the left pic right picture, uh, the, the white one. Um, they have a, uh, the, the, it was a small open side balcony with a metal gate and next to it the, that cement grill to protect the laundry area. Now we can find both the typical little roof, porch and windows with shutters, as if uh, these were a single family house in the village, as well as more contemporary solutions that have, pre have preserved the original, adapting it to the maximum potential of these apartments have. In my opinion, in fact, the renovations that have been made in these houses in particular, particularly, do indeed take advantage of their potential for current standards, improving them. They, they were very dark due to the high amount of wood and had stairs completely enclosed in walls, as you can see in the middle. Of course, the titles were put afterwards. And what people did was remove the wall from the stairs, opening to the living room, and open the windows to the floor so they, ca they could open the living room to the incredible garden that is at the ground level outside, while preserving original and functional features of, the, of some spaces that were still working perfectly. Now, finishing with the cases of the poorest apartments for category number one, there's this case that is hard to believe. Uh, it's the same, but it is. In the middle, you can see the black and white picture is exactly the same building uh, on the on the side in white. It had assessed galleries. Uh, no, the building was made of brick to last longer without the need of for maintenance and not acquire a quickly poor construction appearance. It had assessed galleries with a sense of permanence for people to interact freely, washing lines facing the street, recalling the Mediterranean in a casa kind of life. But this didn't adapt to the Portuguese lifestyle, which has a need for privacy and seclusion integrated in its DNA. And many coming from many people coming from rural areas still had a certain fear of the city. Furthermore, with the houses being small, people seized every opportunity to gain an extra square meter. Moreover, in the 80s, the drug addiction boom that happened more or less everywhere, causing a sense of insecurity, led people to close most of the buildings. Inside, the result is this, where it seems that anything has been gained with closing the gallery, in fact. The open relationship between the living room and the large kitchen is also maintained in this project in a very interesting way, too. The issue of closing of the common areas also applies to this project, which is the final one, with um, funny examples like this um, little roof and porch very modern. <laughs> but I believe all of these manifestations are signs of the times, of course. In this building, in a flat of a young couple, I found this framed newspaper cover on the wall. It's a photograph of the only building of this kind that still exists in Olivais that hasn't been closed off. Not only does it reveal pride in the place where they live, but it also shows their appreciation for the building in, in its original form. This flat is a, a, a of a typical young family, an open space between the kitchen, living room and office where the father working from home shares the same space with the child who had to stay at home that day. The space is limited, but they prefer to be all together. For a reference, I put here the areas and the current sale values of each building. So the most rich one and the most cheap one. 
um, this has been conceived as a social housing, but wouldn't be. I wouldn't be able to pay for the most cheap house in the neighborhood since the prices don't vary nowadays. Don't vary from the rest of the city because Olivais has been assimilated, and today are a consolidated part of the city. Designed and occupied in just over 50 years, its consolidation as an urban territory, de developing their own character and a recognizable ad identity, is evidence of their current concept coherent conceptual framework, <clears throat> which is uh, its ability to embody a spirit of place in contrast with the an anonymity of many of the mass housing developments uh, on the outskirts of large cities are itself a sign of success, I believe. The visited flats reveal a strong capacity for adaptation and both original and recent residents show pride in the place they live and recognize its qualities. The original residents, however, are passing away nowadays and the neighborhood is now starting to be occupied by younger generations who also seem to have a good knowledge of the history and the qualities of these buildings. The problem lies in the cases of flats purchased by real estate agencies that turn all the flats into IKEA-style homes to sell with low costs, often destroying functional fixtures and significantly disqualifying the comfort of these houses. There has never been an integrated, an integrated renovation project in the neighborhood, and here and there you can find good renovation projects within some flats exclusively. I believe it's important to draw, uh, to draw the attention of stakeholders to the quality of these projects, to provide qualified renovation proposals, and especially the cases of buildings still in the possession of public it, it entities have the wonderful opportunity to receive a good requalification project that could serve as an example of public investment in solving the housing problems that are currently so hard and complex in Portugal nowadays. And thank you. I'm finished. So thank you so much, Zara, for keeping the time as well. So now I would like to open the floor to questions. I believe we had uh, two very rich uh presentations uh, approaching symbols of architectural technological and, and social aspirations concerning social housing <clears throat> and the fact uh, that these big ensembles or big complex have uh, to deal with questions of obsolescence so in a way, the technical one, the functional one, uh, and as well, I would say, uh, complying with environmental demands following the urgent and emergent questions of climate changes and, and regulatory standards. So I would ask if there's any question. No hands. Welcome, bienvenido. Ah, thank you. Uh, sorry, but I was run out of uh, energy in, in my house. So, um, thank you. Oh, it has, it has to do with housing and obsolescence. sense. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you both for the presentation. Thank you, Anna, for organizing this fantastic session. Uh, um, for Richard, I have a question related. She, he, you show us uh, at the end three posters of of uh, uh, some uh, action for the for the um, preservation of these units, and you show us uh, one with um, a lot of cells related with uh with the path you know it's it's really interesting because it's it's a whole way of thinking the public spaces uh as um a kind of medieval uh, relation between units and cells i i want some comments on it uh a little bit more if you if you can because uh 
I think it was a really impressive, like uh, how this uh, uh, way of thinking developed in France, uh, because it's uh, it's uh, very it's usually related with the situation of the barrios or, or the favelas or this kind of uh, very popular use way of of thinking the habitat in in relation with the low class income uh, uh, urban areas. And for Sara, thank you, Sara. It's really amazing your research. It's very, very impressive the way you are thinking in about the inside of this uh, this urban complex. I think it's it's a way uh, very. Uh, with its it's a lack of of thinking in relation mostly uh, uh, the the architectural thinking was related with the public spaces of these areas um so thank you for that i think you you name it the lisbon laboratory i think it's really amazing you know, I well, Anna knows I am a fan of of uh, Nuno Portas, and it was uh, quite uh, hard to to uh, think uh, the the ideas how the ideas of of the relation in between morpho urban morphology and architectural typology was uh, in in this way. Uh, promoted in theory and in practice. And I think the relation between both of these is really a laboratory also in, in Lisbon. I think uh, Olivais or Alvalade, uh, even uh, uh, the, all, all the, all the, uh, the um, expansion to the north of the city is really an impressive laboratory uh, of, of uh, ideas mostly from the 50s and the and the 60s uh but i i think the the way you are getting inside of this uh of this um housing complex is really amazing and very i think it it would be very uh uh with a, with a with a huge impact on thinking inside and and outside uh in a way uh, that never I, I never uh, uh, read uh, before. So it's thank you, uh, and I, I have also a, probably a, a, another question. Uh, it's 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 a relation in between the the idea of the organic form and the conserving the interior. Because as, when you show some uh, cases, these that are um, like a, a spread the form from from the center to the periphery of the of the mm -hmm. unit is more conserve in in the way not not so intervene even with decoration or or something. Is there a relation in between? Did I explain myself? On that? Should, should I should I answer now or, or, or should I explain? Yes. Yeah, can you can you have memory of the questions and then we give the world to Zara first? Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, it's possible. The question. I have I have not the question. It's not a problem. I will answer after because there is direct. Okay, so go ahead, Zara. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood the question, but um uh, as I was, um, the case of Olivage is very conserv Olivage North is very conservative in terms of concepts, in terms of uh, corresponding the socio-economic category to urban planning and also the domestic space of uh, buildings. So that uh, radial um, thought you you spoke about on the urban plan, uh, I. Uh, I think it's a very dogmatic way of putting the organize, organizing the the people uh, to for that um, plan and, to, and it, it's because it was the first uh, plan being made. Uh, 
but the organics you can find organics on the public space because you can find amazing mm. pets surrounding the, the 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 buildings and so on and um, in fact i i believe you you can, you you don't um, feel that formal hierarchy only on the the dimension mm. of the buildings of course and because the 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 the, um, the poorest we say, we say like that the poorest use more the the public space than the others that have amazing views in a large balcony so they 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 leave the outside on their on the comfort of their individual balconies and not the uh, poorest families that are more organic uh, organically occupying the space inside the building and and outside the building and I, I don't know if this yeah. answer okay it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, the, the picture you were talking about, uh, Horatio, is a, a very exquisite model innovation because, uh, but it's a unique character, in fact, because it, it's not the one which was uh, more popular. The, the name of this model innovation is Maison et Jardin, House and Garden. And uh, it's a very good example of uh, the proliferant morphology, of course, because it's based on a polyhedric cell, which is uh, one uh, over the other one. So, um, but we only, uh, we find only one example in, in the north of France of this type. And uh, it was not, uh, 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 very, very popular in the old France. But what is very interesting that, uh, of course, uh, because uh, talking about morphology, it was one of the model which, uh, of course, visually is very different uh, from the Grands Anciens, <laughs> of course, very, very different. So this is the the thing important with this model. The architects, are, as a, a group of architects, I can tell you the name, uh, and one is very well known in France, only one, but the architects are um, uh, Michel Calt, Daniel Pouradier Duteil, Pierre Vignal, and Bernard Scheller, and Franck Charas. Bernard Scheller is quite well known because he is the conceptor of a very well-known swimming pool uh, uh, named uh, Girasol, if, Tournesol uh, swimming pool, which has been constructed perhaps in uh, a little bit less than uh, 200 uh, swimming pools of this kind. And the other part of the team were very well known because they are working in uh, Africa, in, in a French colony in Africa. So uh, it's why perhaps uh, people uh, make some kind of assimilation between this strange morphology for France and, uh, of course, a more exotic origin uh, on account of this uh, polyhedric accumulation of uh, cells. Thank but you. It, it is in a very good statement. Yes, um, yes. Because there is a terrace very well used by the inhabitants. So uh, the, the blocks are in very good statements. Oh, if I may now to reintroduce um, a topic um, that was uh, in a way approached by Richard Klein, which is the, the, prefab, the prefabrication of these amazing ensembles from the 70s. So I will say that we are facing a quite sophisticated prefabrication, uh, considering um, not the fact that still today they are in a way resisting, uh, but the very intelligent uh, system considering the servants and the service spaces. So this kind of you uh, who is able to um, support the infrastructures 
uh, of the system and of the buildings. Can you please elaborate a little bit about this? Because I was very happy to see Horacio, because in the back, uh, the image you have in your back, uh, he's the Portales. No, no, it's Republica. Republic. Okay. Uh, and it's very fun because we are quite in the same period in Chile and in France. And I don't know if for you this was a surprise to see these very interesting prefabrications um, with these infrastructures uh, in a kind of uh, uh, service column, I would say, in horizontal. And I would like to ask Richard Klein if he could just elaborate a little more on these and how the architects move with the engineers to be so so efficient well in fact uh, the the label model innovation uh, was a competition where the industry have many importance and the the, the level uh, uh, of the conception of the of, of the architects were sometimes very less than the level of uh, the implication of uh, the industrial uh, company. So it's why it was a very hard critics from the profession of architects. And um, uh, it's why sometimes this is still a uh, uh, critic by the corporation of architect because uh, the architect was so tied to industry then they have less power, uh, of course, than uh, the usually. So uh, it's also why it's perhaps very difficult to save this kind of architecture, because uh, you know it happened just during the the ways uh, uh, the modern movement was a kind of revision, uh, of course, and the postmodern was very high in the middle of the 70 and the middle of the 80 during uh, the construction of this building. So for cooperation region and for, um, of course, the mood and, and of, of the, the, the theory and the, the less importance of the modern movement, um, this kind of building are very, very mistreated in France. But sometimes, not always, but sometimes they are very, very interesting because the industry wants to change uh, the, the systematic method that was used before, uh, at the time before. So, you know, there is no what we call, I don't know the name in English, chemin de grue, uh, where the things... The, the path been... of the construction... Yes, yes, we, can, we could say that. Well, the thing can be very serial, you know, because um, uh, the system they imagine were very different and very, very clever sometimes. For instance, the way in one uh, model innovation named Structure Accueil, where the pillars are tied to the circulation of the fluids in the, in the building is very, very interesting interesting for the flexibility of the flats it can uh, uh, do, you know, because uh, uh, the idea was to put the kitchen and the bathroom everywhere you want in the flats, because as if it's the real uh, plan libre. Yes, just near the vertical structure, it can be, uh, of course, useful and it can be, it can take every um, every kind of form, every kind of, uh, of distribution in, in the flats. So there is sometimes very, very interesting uh, idea of architecture in, uh, in, this, uh, in these 10 years, perhaps, um, the, the, the will to change things uh, produce sometimes very, very intelligent uh, uh, thinking of architecture and relation between uh, industry and architecture. Yes, I, I think that I could say between 68 and 74, there were incredible experiences. And I was thinking, because it's very fresh in my mind, I visited uh, last week the the Olympiad um, 
uh, village in, in Munich, so the one that was constructed for the, the Olympic Games and then became a neighborhood. Uh, and it's amazing the, the prefabrication system and how things are still okay now. Um, so I think at least in Europe, but uh, we have with us Horacio and in Chile, there are very interesting examples as well, as well in Mexico. Uh, during this period, uh, with, uh, I think, a quite really high level of quality in terms of space, in terms of constru construction um, in, in housing. And I was thinking uh, on your uh, Immeuble à Gradin, so these ones with the gardens on social housing, and, and you present to us as well the interior of the house is very updated and very nice, I think. Um, and and this reminds me as well some of the Italian experiences from Giancarlo Di Carlo in Urbino. It's very, 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 very curious as well. So uh, I don't know, Horace, if you want to comment. And for uh, Zara, I would like to stress this question of urban morphology and different types. Sara, you are not. Are you listening? I am not. I think she's frozen. Okay, not for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I I was thinking on on Giancarlo de Carlo uh, because of the same uh, idea of the of this construction related with a, a kind of. Um, um, infrastructure, urban infrastructure with housing. It's really, really interesting. Sara, I, I was, um, how, how are you dealing with the, uh, with the different, what can I say, different, uh, uh, em environment, I must say, constructed by each, each, uh, owner of the, of the, um, of the unit, are you taking pictures, taking mm -hmm. the position of the of the um, of the furniture? Because no. I, I, I sorry, was sorry, sorry, in, in a... I'm in Porto and I disappeared. <laughs> okay. I'm back. So please it's... go, 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 go. Okay. I'm going. Uh, are you because control you know, my energy? Uh, some some of the of the research of the twenties was related with the. With the free spaces uh, in relation of the unit and furniture, the the um, yes, uh, Alexander Klein uh, mm -hmm. eight points on on existence minimum. You can use it to um, make a relation with the with the inside of of with the domestic space inside of the unit because you show us a uh, um, very what can I say? It's it's uh, um, so uh, private, very <laughs> bad thinking. But it's it in a kind of bourgeois, yeah. uh, very decorated inside. You know, with all this uh, furniture from some uh, Louis something, uh, Louis eighty nine or something <laughs> like that. Uh, you know, it's. it's it's really amazing, full of 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 things inside, full of uh, tapestries and and papers and all of that, uh, making a, a different idea. Uh, uh, yes, that... Uh, that is not being the focus of my research because um, uh, the the placement of furniture. I'm not um, I'm not identifying that. I I make visits to the to the houses. Uh, I go with um, standard questions about uh, what they have um, changed and why they have changed it, uh, and uh, what they like, what what doesn't work for them, and so on. To and I, I, I bring the original plan and I take me measures measures uh, and I yeah. design what uh, have been changing to the original design and I take pictures uh, because the goal is to identify the. Um, 
the things were, were that have been um, resulting that have been successful until nowadays in terms of comfort and what uh, people need to change uh, because in the end I, I want to compare the original and the current. I have been making two surveys, the survey to the original design and the survey to the current occupation in terms of space, not furniture. Okay. Um, and then I want with the maintenance and obsolescence, I want to to make like a matrix of the Good features, uh, not uh, not um, features, not enough for today. Um, and in the end, to make recommend recommendations how to intervene on these uh, these flats, preserving the original qualities that are still working today, and how to uh, in a qualified manner manner uh, to uh, change the, the the things that are not working anymore for the majority of people. The the furniture and the ambience of the flats it's like a, a surprise and it's uh, it's more it's a funny of course it's it's amazing <laughs> and it's like more uh, uh, an additional uh, motivation for my work <laughs> which can be of course um, uh, make uh, several conclusions on social terms and aesthetic taste and so on uh, but it's not the focus of the <laughs> but it will give. For sure, a good exhibition, at least. Richard, a question? Yes, to Sarah. Sarah, thank you very much for your, for your presentation. It was very interesting for me because we are working now of, uh, on the um, collective buildings of high standing in France. So, uh, And it was very strange to me that... Uh, um, I recognize inside uh, the, the buildings you show us some details which are only took place in France in a high standing level. It was very interesting to me to see that because the, the, the furniture, the, not the furniture, the, the furniture attached to the buildings uh, mm -hmm. were very, for instance, for me, it's a design that still exist only in a very high class uh, level uh, standards yes. uh, social building. So it was very, very interesting for that because uh, I, I was quite astonished uh, um, by the interiors. Yes, for me, it was been a surprise as well. For Professor Einstein, probably not because she, she knows these buildings for long, but for me, uh, even uh, constructions ma made today <laughs> are far, far from away of the quality of this, even the the cheapest, <laughs> the cheapest ones. Uh, the details of wood, of lightning, of uh, devices for natural ventilation, it's absolutely amazing. And, uh, and, the, and the woods are incredibly preserved today in most of the buildings. And it, it, that's why uh, the, the my work gain uh, because we are dealing with uh, with um, huge problems concerning housing and access to housing and and now we are now we have a lot of uh, competitions for providing social housing for 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 people um, and it's still uh, uh, astonishing for me to realize uh, the quality of these buildings and so I'm very committed on showing to the authorities in the when i finished my work uh, to 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 show uh, how how good architecture has been made um, and i think it, it will be surprise a lot of people even in architecture field there i i think that it's not very known the quality of the interiors of these buildings because studies have been more focused on urban designs and the quality of the common spaces and so on not inside of the flats and many of are being changed in a horrifying manner um, by real estate agencies because I'm still I'm also following the the sales uh, in the web I I subscribe and I received uh, on a daily basis on the email the, the the flats that are being sold on the neighborhoods and I can see the changes that have been made uh, like IKEA kitchens. Uh, equal here and in New York and so on, everywhere, the same kitchen and destroying these particular fixtures very, very qualified. Uh, 
because they don't understand they, they don't know <laughs> they, they don't know the meaning of this this design of this material approach uh, the ventilation the lightning and so on oh very interesting this thing but but richard klein spoke as well about a kind of a special test uh, I would say in the two main Portuguese cities, Lisbon and Porto, during the, the end of the 60s, very French. They had lots of French magazines. That's perhaps one of the, inf the influencers for these people. And we may say that even in this kind of social housing, it was a kind of uh, middle class, I would say. Some of the examples in Olivais. Olivais was very mixed. And we must not forget that at this time we still had the imperial system and that's why the woods are so good because they came from Africa um, and there was a kind of uh, social level, a little bit up style with this kind of, I don't know, neoclassical papers in the this kind of ambience who were very strange with these so well-designed uh, buildings. Oh, Horacio, do you want to have a, a last comment? I think we are about finishing. We have something like three minutes if we are very strict to the time. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you so much. I think for it was very us. interesting. Uh, we are... Uh... Uh, at the moment, we have only two more pre-events next week, and in in and and one uh, week uh, um, after. Uh, um, thank you so much for for the presentation. I was really uh, impacted with both presentations uh, uh, related with uh, with the kind of research and kind of production in in France. I don't know if Claudio, who who was the the uh, the introduction, to, who did the introduction today, is wanna wanna uh, said something uh, as uh, one of the organizers of of this uh, 18 international Docomomo conference. We are very pleased to have you in this pre-event just to take a warm uh, 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 ambience uh, and and moving. The, the ideas uh, preparing the uh, the conference we are uh, fi finalizing the the um, process of selection of of the sessions uh, we have um, probably this week or early next week we have the the sessions of of the conference uh, uh, already uh, selected so we are uh, at this moment starting also with the workshop, the students' workshop uh, uh, preparation. Uh, so we are on 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 the way to do so many things. We are um, thinking about uh, the twenty four hours modern, which is a, a proposal of Umberto Bonomo to have uh, in next May uh, one day showing the modern of the entire world uh, with the, all the Docomomo chapters in, in the 24 hours modern also uh, to do that. So uh, I'm, I'm asking you to be part of this uh, uh, tremendous effort also. Uh, thank you, Anna, for, for chairing this, this session. It was really amazing to receive your, your proposal and with such good uh, works from Richard and from from Zara uh, and well see you in in 10 days I think yes in in, in five or, or ten days thank you very much for for the invitation and for being able to participate yes we I remember also we have a uh, more uh, attendance in in our uh, YouTube channel of the uh, Heritage Center of the Catholic University, where uh, all the presentations um, were recording. And uh, thank you so much for being here with us.
Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Zara. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Claudio, for supporting us. <laughs> oh, welcome. And thank you, Horacio. And where is the lady who was with us? Okay. It's I difficult. To... Trilce. Ah, Trilce is here with us. Yes. Trilce. She's sending us very important information in the chat. Please see. She's yes. sending us yes. the links and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Have bye. a beautiful bye, week and weekend and keep on working. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.